If you look at a well-made protective filter, there will be a heavy coating of sealant between the housing, what the thing that holds the filter, and the edges of the filter. And what this is for is so that air doesn't get in through one of the folded edges and passed to get from one side to the other without being filtered. So if my these fingers are, let's say, the housing, and they're sealed to part of the filter, but there's a crease here that isn't sealed, air can go in there and get from one side to the other side of the filter without going through the filter. So this is a filter that I cut out to fit into a container and I used some duct tape around the edge as a kind of molding to hold the, in this case, epoxy glue onto those edges to get a full seal going all the way around. So this way I can now mount this inside of the filter housing. And as long as I have one side completely glued, there won't be any way for air to get from the side that I glued into the housing without going through the filter. In this video I'm going to show how to do that process of cutting out a filter and putting it in to a housing. I often do a lot of our learning from mistakes. The reason why I came up with the method of using a makeshift mold out of a strip of material instead of trying to glue the filter directly to the housing is here I use probably two ounces of glue. More than a day later I can still smell the fumes and when I held this up to the light I could see some bright spots along this edge which be tough to get to and that indicated that some of those edges aren't sealed and air could get in there and go out. And even if I covered those up, there's likely some spots like that that I missed and can't really get access to them in this housing. I also learned that you, it's better to use a uniform, like something where I can just put the filter directly in than something like this, which curves in. Like I could slide this filter in, but once it's in, there's very little I could do to glue it. So something like this is, I think, a much better approach. Here, what I was doing is I'm testing the duct tape to see if I can use it with different types of glue. One thing I found out is this glue, which is supposed to cure in a few hours doesn't, so now I have to go. So unlike the previous example that I showed where I needed a glue around everything, once you have a airtight coating going around all the folds, all of these folds on the filter, then all you need to do is seal one side so I could seal this side or this side, this side's in this case easier. So I'm just going to fill in around here. Never get anything that somewhere that says as seen on TV. I recommend avoiding things that say as seen on TV. Fortunately, I went through all of my the main silicone caulk that I was using. This stuff is 
a little bit tougher to work with. I'm gonna try maybe if I make a little bit of a wider opening. Eh, I made this opening a little bit wider. Okay, that does seem to be going a little bit better. Now I still need to make sure that I have a complete seal to that ring that I made around the filter with the epoxy and the edge of this container. But at least I don't have to worry about getting both sides and everywhere in between. Okay, it looks like I've got a good coating that goes all the way around. Perhaps one advantage of, of this over the silicone caulk is it doesn't, I don't smell as many fumes. Of course, that doesn't mean there's less fumes. Could just be chemicals in the air that I don't smell. So I should probably still open up a window. It's generally always a good idea when working with chemicals. And I'll make a different video for showing how to actually cut a filter into shape. But that's how once you once you get a ring around the filter to seal the edges, how you can attach it to a housing just by making a bead of glue that makes a connection between the housing and the edge. So there's um, some air gap here between the housing and that ring of epoxy but that's fine because that epoxy is airtight so air can't get to the filter anywhere along that ring it, so it has to get in through there and it can't totally avoid the ring because if it tries to go on the outside there's a layer between that ring, a layer of other glue between that ring and the housing. So that means that air can't go around the filter, it has to go through the filter.